Welcome to the Late Night Race Review. We are back for 2023. In today's podcast, we talk about the pre-season testing. We give our predictions for the entire season, as well as our predictions for the Bahrain GP next week. Will Dave's love for Mick Schumacher continue now that he's a reserve driver for Mercedes? Is Isidro's voice still as sexy as it was last year? The answers to these questions and more coming up. Don't forget to support the podcast by hitting those like, follow and subscribe buttons. Welcome back to the Late Night Race Review for Season 2. We had planned to be a, a video podcast, but we broke many, many webcams in the process. Um, our ugly faces are not ready for video just yet. So we're audio only this week and we, we will have it sorted pretty soon. Dave, how do you feel about being on the cusp of the world, seeing your face? I was so disappointed. and I'm sure everybody else is as well. <laughs> That's all I have to say on the matter. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I personally can't wait uh, for the world to see the beautiful face of Isidro Consalves, who joins us this evening. Isidro, Every how are you? You and me both. The Just sex appeal today. of the podcast is going through the roof. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's missing out. <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get there. But um, I, I guess today's podcast is is a look forward to the, the 2023 season. We're going to take a look at how the teams have been performing in, in preseason testing, have a look at deliveries, and we're going to break down what we think is going to happen this year. Is that a good summary, Dave? I think so. Um, and we're going to have then the two prediction games. Is right. Yes. So we're going to so. do uh, we're going to do the prediction game for um, our predictions for the season, uh, and then we're going to do our usual weekly sort of uh, race prediction game as well. So it'll be confusing. Roll with it. It'll work. <laughs> strap in. This is going to yeah. be a fun <laughs> hour. Strap in or strap on, whatever works for you. It's going to be fun. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, we're back and we can't wait to get going. Um, we'll start off, I think we'll kick things off uh, in alphabetical order, just to mix things up, uh, with Aston Martin. Let's break down where Aston Martin are at this year. Dave, I'm going to throw it to you first of all. Now Give that's us a fine breakdown. It, that's fine throwing it to me first, but... You you shouldn't have jumped in straight away and said that we're doing this in alphabetical order because clearly, oh yes, in our not in our, in <laughs> our pre podcast should be there. <laughs> uh, notes, we realised this isn't in alphabetical order at all. <laughs> not quite, not quite alphabetical. It's somewhat we'll alphabetical. Yes, yeah, so let's, let's kick it off with Aston Martin. Um, yeah, okay. Well, look, I'm not I'm not going to talk too much about the the car launches and stuff like that because I believe I'm totally honest. They were an absolute buzzkill. Like it, it, it sucked the energy and the enthusiasm I had for the season. Everything looked, the, yeah. I'm not even going to go there. Uh, let's let's roll on to the preseason testing. Um, I think these are these are the dark horse for this season is Aston Martin. Um, not for title, but for that midfield battle. I'm really looking forward to seeing what they're going to do. They. They've sort of the development of the car, like they've complete, like they've been working on this a long time. They've really evolved this car completely, um, taken a lot from Ferrari, Red Bull, um, and but not complete copies. They they've sort of put their own twist on things, um, so they're really giving this a go themselves. Possibly they've also spent a sizable chunk, though. Looking at the development work they put in, they could have spent a sizable chunk on their development and their their um, wind tunnel time as well. So might be a bit concerned about that. How it leads to um, sort of future development throughout the season. Yeah, they, they look good in testing, stable. Alonso look quick. Um, I think, like I said, I think it's they're, they're one to they're one to keep an eye on. Yeah, I I heard people saying that this weekend that it it could be finally that Alonso has made the switch at the right time to the right team. And if anyone's going to pull the performance out of that car, it's going to be Fernando Alonso. So yeah, yeah watch this space. I'm looking forward to. For, for next week's race on that one. Yeah, I give up. But we have, let's, let's talk about the, the lineup procedural. We have Stroll, Alonso, and uh, we've had Drogovic uh, in testing because of a, a, a sickness. Uh, Stroll was... Uh, a sickness? Accident. Yeah, yeah sickness because he decided accident. to cycle his bike to school. <laughs> oh, is that what it was? <laughs> Sorry, apologies. So Stroll was injured, not sick. I thought it was a sickness. Um, this time last year, I think Aston Martin had a similar thing with Vettel. Am I wrong? <laughs> yeah, so Cedro, what do you think of the lineup this year, Alonso and Stroll? I think uh, Alonso will have a very good advantage. The fact that Stroll is missing this testing, it mm. means that Drogovic has been a very good work in the car. Stroll 
he doesn't have experience. It will take a few races before he can see what's what needs to change in the car, how to adapt to little things, and that will cost us and Martin a few points, I'll say. They are very strong this year, but the fact that Stroll is not there, it's only Alonso that's pushing all the changes. So definitely Alonso will be much more up to speed. Even though it's a new car for him, he'll be doing much better than Stroll. Yeah. I, I think we all know where everyone stands on this one. But Dave, I'm going to throw it back to you. In terms of Alonso versus Stroll, who's coming out on top this year? Van Stroll. <laughs> now talk no. about a spanner in the works <laughs> Lance Stroll on his bicycle um, no no of course it's going to be Alonso is going to come out on top and uh, Stroll uh, will be kicking up the rear as the as the number two but yeah. I think he, look, again we said it last season Lance Stroll has is, has proved himself a good driver and deserves his position on the grid I think so um, but he's just not at the calibre of Alonso no definitely not Isidro what do you think I hate to say this, but Scotty was right. Yeah, of course I'm right. Hulkenberg, he raced the first two races. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he had COVID, but, I believe, wasn't it? Uh, but on the uh, Aston Martin, yeah, Alonso will be definitely uh, leading the team to the middle field position. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think we're all in agreement there. We can we can move on from from Austin Martin, uh, and next in our none what alphabetical uh, order, Alpha Tari with uh, Yuki Tsunoda and Nick DeFries. Dave, go on. Oh, you're going back to me again. All right, yeah, Jesus. I'm going to start off with you. Okay. Um, okay, let's start with the car first. Um, there, I mean, th- this will be an unusual or not an unusual. This will be an interesting one because they're they're they're. Focus was on sort of on their um, on the aero was you know their, you know their focus for um, their goals this year was going to be on the aero, and from what we've seen from testing, it looks like they sort of have addressed a lot of that, um, and and they've had a decent enough testing session, but I suppose we haven't seen anyone do a lap in anger yet, so we we don't really know as to where that's at. Um, they are using a, some components from um, Red Bull, the, like some of the new components from Red Bull, uh, but the aero and stuff is largely all in-house Alpha Tauri. Um, so, yeah, I think they, they have some handling issues came up during testing. I don't think it's going to be anything that's not going to be able to be addressed come the first race or the first couple of races. So I don't think it's got, something that's going to plague them all year. It's not a design flaw or anything like that uh, in their approach. So, um, yeah, I think they should be okay. But again, whether they have the power and stuff like that to keep it in the midfield, and whether they have the drivers to 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 compete in the midfield, I really don't know. Um, yeah, they could end up struggling and be at the back of that midfield. So, um, yeah, yeah. Isidro, any opinions on Alpha Tari to differ from Dave? No, I the the car seems to be a bit better, but the problems uh, the drivers to know the should be showing up, uh, but uh, he's not at the moment. I think um, Nick Vries, considering that he doesn't have the same experience to know that he's doing much better, and he doesn't know the car or the team as well to know that, and still Nick Vries is is looking much better driving the Alpha Tauri than to know these. I'm not mm-hmm. sure if more pressure on Tsunoda because he's uh, the experienced guy in the in the team for this year. So I don't know there, but at the moment Nick the is showing up to know the how to drive the Alpha Tauri, mm-hmm. the new one. Experienced Tsunoda maybe, but this this could be Tsunoda's last season uh, for Alpha Tauri. If he has another one like last year, I can see him um or there being a, a vacant seat at, at Alpha Tauri next year. I would imagine. So in terms of Sonoda versus De Freeze, I'm 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 gonna be interested to see where you stand in this Isidro. I'll throw it to you first of all, because I gave it to Dave the last time. So where do you stand? I think Nick De Vries will be doing much better. Maybe because it'll be his first season, so he's not uh, that afraid to take chances. Mm. And Sonoda is uh, he has the experience and he knows the team and he should be familiar with the car, but I still see Nick De Vries um, doing doing much better this season. 
Okay, Dave, where are you? Um, yeah, I'm going to freeze as being the the number one driver here. So Noda, he's not done anything yet in F1 that has kind of impressed me, and mm. I don't think he's done anything that at this stage would have warranted me giving him a seat for this season. To be honest, yeah, I might have kicked him back to reserve role and brought uh, someone else in, and yeah. So I, I think this year to freeze. Yeah, Sonoda still looks like he just comes across as a, a, a rookie driver still, and he's not. So I think, yeah, I'm going to go to freeze and Sonoda. Yeah, I I agree. Yeah, to freeze uh, over Sonoda, the pressure is going to be on Sonoda, and I think he knows that. And he hasn't been performing when the pressure hasn't been on, so I don't really feel he's going to be doing that well when the pressure is on. Mm. I see, I see a lot of DNFs in this guy's future. So to freeze, as you say, with the pressure, there's still going to be pressure there, but somewhat off. Uh, I think he'll he'll uh, he'll take that. All right, let's move on to the next one. This is one I'm excited about actually. Uh, Alfa Romeo, our lovely new Alfa Romeo. I'm going to go to Isidro first. I'm going to go Isidro. What do you Alfa think of Romeo. Alfa Romeo? this year yeah they and they are looking good this year the the changes they made uh we can see during the testing that they definitely they definitely work whatever they did during the off season mm. it paid off i mean we saw uh joe on day two finish first and bottas finished uh, third uh third yesterday uh, today so uh, i see alfa romeo doing much better this year than they did last year yeah, Dave. Yeah, they've. Uh, I mean, they focused on the the rear of the car this year. They, they've new gearbox, new rear suspension and stuff. So they've sort of better airflow and stuff like that over that rear beam and stuff like that. The um. So yeah, they, they, and <clears throat> excuse me, they have a different side pods and stuff this year as well. They've kind of got a hybrid of the Ferrari and Red Bull. They sort of have the the stance of the Red Bull on the side pods, and they've got like sort of the intakes of the Ferrari. So. And they've got a sort of a mix and match of things, concepts going on on the car. <clears throat> Same with the outlets, the for the for the sort of the dirty air that and the the for from the cooling and stuff like that. They've got those those wide sta- those um, sort of big fucking cannons at the back, as opposed to what they had before, which was like a t- tighter looking profile. Mm. So um, so yeah, they've they've made considerable changes. Uh, I think Bottas put in some good times on in testing, but. I'm not. Uh, I, I'm not convinced just yet that they're going to be sort of there or thereabouts. I think. I think they they're they're going to be sort of down the the mid pack, sort of back towards the back of the bit, middle of the pack. I think. Um, for me. Um. So in terms of Joe versus Bottas, where are we standing, David? Let's start with you. Ah, no brainer, Bottas and then Joe. Um. Joe, I think this could be his make or break season and not in the same way right. that Sonoda it's going to be his make or break season. I think Joe has a little bit more grace uh, given to him this season. I just have a feeling he has something more to give. I think there's something else to come from him and I think he he might step it up to the next level this season. I Maybe that's just a gut feeling, but I do feel there was improvements you know, I could see improvements happening, uh, yeah. and I think maybe this year we could see the next step step of that improvement. I still don't think it's going to be to the point where he's going to, um, you know, compete with his teammate. Mm. But um, yeah, make or break. I think I think he he'll step up. But if he doesn't step up this uh, to the next level, um, I think Alfa Romeo then would be or Sauber will be looking at possibly replacing I'm, I'm pretty sure his contracts finished at the end of this season as well i think there's a lot of contracts finished at the end of the season mm. um but uh yeah Bottas then joe that was a yeah. long-winded way of saying that sorry all right decedra where are you uh I'll, I'll say the same Bottas will be the number one driver and joe second but i think joe will be doing much better the, this season that he did last year i think the car is much better mm-hmm. and we could see during day one and day two of testing that show was doing very well considering everything yeah yeah uh, i think i'm on the on the same uh, on the same page with you there if not alone for bottas's helmet in testing let's move on to um the car that is probably sponsored by pepe le pew it's yeah. alpine 
Ocon and Gasly. Uh, also, um, the Zinedine Zidane, um, not sponsored by Zinedine Zidane, but a, a spokesman apparently for Alpine. Um, so let's, uh, Dave, let's start off with you. I think we'll go with uh, you for the Alpine. Yeah, these are going to be uh, an interesting one to keep an eye on because I think they their focus was on reliability for sure for this yeah. season. And I think that was fairly evident in the, the preseason testing. They kind of didn't really open up the car to its full potential in any shape or form, I don't feel. And so I think there's a lot more to see from that car. Well, there's a lot more to see from everybody's car, but especially Alpine. Um, they look like, you know, they, they've obviously set, set out their pre-testing program and they completed it and the car didn't blow up. So <laughs> thumbs up for Alpine. Um, but look, if they've resolved the uh, if they've resolved the reliability issues and the car is sort of performing like they expect it to, they could be up there. They could be you know challenging for the best of the rest. I think. I mean, they've they've made considerable changes to the to the aero work. Obviously, reliability was a big thing, but they've also done uh, sort of an evolution of last year's uh, aero concept. And uh, yeah, I, 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 that they'll be one to, to keep an eye on. Them and Aston Martin, I think, are, are ones to keep an eye on this season. Mm. Isidro, what are you thinking? Um, I have to agree with uh, Dave. From unless Alpine is uh, hiding something, and the testing didn't show anything special, they barely managed to get the top ten driver. I think only day two they get Pierre Gasly top ten. And overall, I'm not impressed with what I've seen. So unless they are hiding something and they want to make a surprise for next week in Bahrain, I, I don't think Alpine will be doing as as good as they did in the 2022. Go on, Dave. So I have to I have to cut in here. Like I mean, but you have to remember, this is a team that's focused on reliability. Like they're not coming into a three day testing, just ramping their engine up to full crank. Yeah, uh, you know, yeah, yeah. like that they, they've obviously clearly come with a, an idea to stress test the, the the engine, the components to to some degree through a testing program. Like, yeah, I, I think saying that they don't like their their testing is different to other like every team is coming to test different areas of their yeah, their, yeah. their their sort of cars for this year and the fact that Alpine is um, coming to test reliability, I think their, yeah, their testing program is going to be different. So, you know, saying that there's not much to see. um, Yeah, that's true. There wasn't, but I think there might be a reason for that. I could be wrong. We could be coming back here next week (laughs) and uh, Zero will be pointing and laughing at me. But uh, (laughs) on the off chance that I'm right, I'm saying my piece. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> uh, I, w- I would imagine a, a large majority of Alpine's preseason was spent making sure that the contracts they were writing up were airtight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We didn't develop and... the car at all. We just were, were sitting there with the contracts, making sure that no one can get out of these. <laughs> so something that will be a little bit more interesting here is the debate around whether it will be Ocon or Gasly. This is a little bit more closely contested than, than anyone we've talked about already. So I think we have to go back to a Cedro, do we? Yeah. Um, Why not? Isidro, what do you think? Ocon or Gasly? Who's taking it? No doubt Ocon will be okay. telling uh, <laughs> stories Jesus, to, to Gasly. Yeah. I, don't, I don't see Gasly doing very well. Especially it's a new car for him, a new team. Ocon oh. is there and he he raced with Alonso, so he knows all the tricks in the book. Mm. And I'm sure he'll be using on Gasly. Jesus, <laughs> no mercy here. Right, Dave, go on. Um, I I I think I I battled with it maybe a little bit more than the Zidro did. I did go with Ocon and uh, over Gasly in the end, but I I think um I don't think it was as clear cut for me as it was for a Zidro. Uh I think Gasly is a good driver. Um mm. uh, but I think Ocon can be a dirty driver. Yeah. Um and sometimes that's what you need to come out on top. So that's why I just like I think Zidro said there, like he has the tricks, he knows the tricks in the book, and he, you know he's been with the team as well, so he does have an advantage. And Pierre Gas, go on. Yeah, I th- I think if we were coming off the twenty twenty one season, 
and Pierre Gasly had just moved to Alpine, we'd be having a different conversation. I think last season really kind of put a dent in Gasly. If we you yeah. remember back to 2021, all the performances that Gasly was putting in, how he was performing that car, he 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 did a a George Russell Williams esque type season where he was pulling that car to where it shouldn't have been. So, I but I you, think he's you, a cleaner driver. Do you yeah. not remember Ocon with Alonso? Like like Alonso is elbows out driver, but even Ocon pushed the boundaries with Alonso. Mm. Um. And Ocon's in that team. Uh, you know, he he has the experience within the team, and that car is an evolution of last year. Um, so I think he will get up to speed with that a little bit quicker. Mm. So I just think, and look, I don't know what to make of the whole um sort of the rivalry between them. I mean, they do say that it's brushed under the carpet, but if there even if there's a even if they are sort of friends on a handshake now, yeah. uh, after whatever kind of nonsense went on prior to now um that won't be long in coming to the, yeah. the surface again yeah, yeah. when something happens on track and if anyone's going to instigate it i would say it's going to be Ocon who's going to instigate it but uh but yeah look that's i went back and forward but i think it's going to be Ocon over gasly Okay. No, yeah, I'll go, I'll, I'll go with you on that, actually. You've convinced me. Go on, Isidro. What do you have to say? And let's not forget, Gasly, he held the penalties on his uh, driving license only finished in April. So oh, he needs yeah. to be careful until then. Keep his nose clean. Very good point. Yeah, very good point. Okay, you've brought me over to the Akan side. I'll go with you. <laughs> um, all right. <laughs> this would be even more interesting, this conversation. Ferrari. Dave, take us take us away. How have Ferrari <laughs> been doing in preseason? I think they've done okay, uh, but like a lot of teams, the, the the proof will be come next week. Um, they've stuck largely with again the same car as last year. I mean, there, there's if you were to sort of glance at this year's car, there's nothing really obvious that stands out, other than obviously the livery has a little bit more. Again, even Ferrari stripped back paint to yeah. go with uh, sort of bare carbon, but um. One of a couple of the issues that Ferrari had last season was the drag on the car, which we saw on tracks that were kind of you know with a lot of straight lines, yeah, a lot of uh, straights, um, required a lot of top speed and stuff like that. The drag on the car was just uh, a hindrance to them. Mm. So, but on the so the twisty stuff, they were lightning quick. Um, so that was one of the key component, key areas they had to focus on for this year. And the other one was obviously the performance of the engine, like that was down considerably on where it needed to be so there's a rumor that gave that, that gained a lot of ground which said that they've solved the issue with the power unit and that it's outputting about 40 horsepower more for this season uh unverified rumors but they they have gained sort of more mainstream media traction uh it's been announced you know it was being discussed on sky sports and a few other outlets so if they've done that, if they've reduced the drag as well, which according to old uh, Fred, they uh, they have, then they're they're certainly going to be up there competing with for with uh, Red Bull. I, I mean, they they know that car well. They they've made some adjustments to or some improvements. They've added. There's been a return of the S duct, which to to pull that airflow in and and, and down into those big gullies of the in, in the side pods um to to help the airflow and stuff like that so there's a few sort of enhancements to their design that they went with or the concept that they went with last season mm -hmm. but the big thing i think will be just down to those two components whether they've reduced the drag and they have um sort of turned up that be, being able to turn up that engine reliably Oh, that's it. Okay. Well, um, what, what else do you want me to say? You yeah, want me to no, just, no, no. Here, do you, you want me to crack out a diagram here? Hang on a second. Um, Let me get my PowerPoint presentation out here and I'll go through. <laughs> team, team principle changing, I thought might have come up, but okay, we'll, we'll throw it over to Isidro and then we'll have a little talk. Jesus, about I can't cover everything. Isidro's there waiting to have a conversation here. <laughs> right, go on, Isidro, go on. Well, I have to say that Ferrari was the, the only team actually doing a proper presentation of the car. Mm. They didn't just uh, went to a studio and show the car they actually went out and told and show the world this is what we have if it's enough to win the title well we'll talk again in back in november 
mm. but it's it seems that uh, they did some changes, uh, especially in the team that they have a new a new team principal. Let's see what uh, what that will change uh, on the track. Mm. Go on, Dave. Seeing as how I'm being slated for not having much of an opinion here. <laughs> um, also, uh, what they've done is their uh, former head of strategy has been given a shiny new job back in the factory cleaning toilets. And they've oh, no. appointed somebody else as the head of strategy at, uh, right. from, from now on the, on the race days. So it'll be interesting to see whether uh, that has any impact as well on their decision making throughout the season. Yeah, well, I mean, they had to do something. That was ridiculous last year. Comical. Comical. Yeah. But I mean, look, think of it this way. That car last year was good. Like, yeah. I know it yep. didn't, it underachieved if you took the whole season, but that was largely down to, again, those th three things, the strategy, the the drag on the car, and the having to tune the engine or t tone the engine down because of reliability. So if, if they've solved them, I mean, they, they I mean, look, or you know we haven't even kind of seen the first race yet but i mean why why wouldn't they be in contention yeah absolutely so the head of design and michael massey both on uh, crayon duty crayon um, duty and <laughs> latifi's driving the, the bus back and forth for the... <laughs> um let's uh dave give me your your thoughts on leclerc versus science probably uh, probably not as controversial or there's, there's not as hard to decide maybe but let's see what you gotta say I think I'm going to make controversy out of this. Oh, <laughs> beautiful. I think I'm going to go the same way as you, but go on. I'm putting signs over Leclerc. Um, I, I don't know. There's something in me that just says that there's something, there's something very like sort of, uh, this sounds ridiculous, but I can kind of explain how my thought process, but I find Leclerc is very emotional when he's driving mm. and he gets, and when I say that, like, I mean, He's react reactive to things, and he can make stupid mistakes because that emotion comes in. Now, signs does make go make mistakes as well, but I, it's, it's it just doesn't seem to come from the same place. I just think he's more level headed, and will um, this season. I, I I just feel he's going to learn from last season, and will will step forward this season and. Um, because, I mean, there's not much between those two drivers. They're two... They're, it's probably the best pairing yeah. on the grid, I would say, uh, in terms of balance. Um, mm, yeah, you know, if yeah. you had to have two together, I think they are the best two to have. Um, I mean, some might argue, obviously, Hamilton and George Russell. I mean, they are... Uh, that, that, that's a good combination as well. But, mm. yeah, I just think... I think Leclerc, when, when, when things get tough, I think he... It it shows in his driving. It shows in his decision making. Signs when things get tough. Like I mean, he's just started improving last season. Like I mean, it just started getting. Better. I know we made jokes. I mean, you could listen back to the podcast from last season, and we or I made jokes anyway. I won't throw you into the sinking ship with me. But <laughs> I, I like I would have made jokes last season where I knew that like you know when he when he had a, a like a an, a failure or some sort of reliability issue on the previous race. We sort of said, oh, we were we, we always had signs with a DNF in the next race because we just thought he's going to come out overly aggressive and he's going to fucking bin it in the second corner. Mm -hmm. Um, I think he's going to have worked on that. I think that will be out of his. I I just don't think that's going to be the same driver we're going to see this year. No particular uh, evidence to back that up. Just pure gut feeling. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, long winded way. Signs first and Leclerc second. Let's hope you're not putting the Dave Jericho Schumacher curse on, on Carlos Sainz this year. Uh, Isidro, um, what have you got to say about this? It's funny Dave is saying about Sainz because I think early in the week uh, someone doing the one of the Sky F1 shows was saying that Sainz would be the the winner this year for 2023. Mm. But uh, The I'll winner not, of the, the World championship. championship? Yeah. Oh, really? Right. All right, you know. Have a so, day off, like putting, bit far, yeah. <laughs> putting some pressure on the driver, but uh, between the Leclerc and Sainz, I go with Leclerc. Right. All right. He well, finished now we got a second, so he wants to prove that he can get the first place. Hmm. 
we're going to have to go uh, a majority vote on this. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Isidro, which means our official late night race <laughs> review stance on Ferrari is Heinz <laughs> will will outdo Leclerc. Oh, I can feel the Schumacher curse. Okay, um, moving on. Let's let's move on to the next uh, team. Haas are in the house. Good um, give a fuck next. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Moving <laughs> on. Yeah, the. <laughs> The probably the most efficient uh, livery drop of any of them. They were just like JPEG drop out. It was done. Um, what do we think in the Cedro this season with Hass? I think it'll be they'll be doing slightly better. I imagine mainly because they have the experienced drivers. It's probably from the bottom of the table. It's probably the most experienced team overall. There are mm. no rookies, so. From the driver perspective, it's a solid team. Mm-hmm. If the let's see if the car shows up for to the drivers, because uh, they cannot say it'll be oh it's uh, Mick Schumacher doesn't know anything, yeah. he's pulling us down. Well, they have two very experienced drivers. If uh, they need to say well we need to improve the car because it cannot be the drivers, that's for sure. So we'll see. Yeah. Dave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you hate Haas. Um, the only good thing for Haas this year is that you're not backing one of their drivers, so they will not crash every opportunity that they get. Um, you know, I was thinking when I was kind of doing my, you know, just watching the preseason and taking my notes and stuff like that, I was thinking, I I don't think I've ever not wanted a team <laughs> to do, you know, to win anything or yeah. to, 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 to lose. Um, but Haas... I'm happy if they finish at the back of the grid. Um, I don't think they will, unfortunately. But <laughs> yeah, look, for the sake of the podcast, I'll give what I have. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the uh, Yeah, look, I mean, their focus, I, I would imagine their focus this year, I actually don't know what their focus was that they were targeting for their testing and stuff like that, but I would imagine it's going to be similar as they copy Ferrari's homework. I'm yeah. guessing it's going to be somewhat similar that it's going to be sort of drag reduction is going to be a key thing. Um, a lot of work on the aero, possibly a bit of, you know, they're, they're using Ferrari power units. So it's going to be um, sort of performance and stuff like that, which will come obviously from, I would assume it's going to come from whatever work Ferrari do. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, uh, suppose, assuming they've kind of resolved a few of those issues. <sighs> yeah, look, they might do okay. I don't. I. I. I hope. I, I look. I hope they finish last. And give me. Give me a quick Magnussen or Hulkenberg. Who's coming out on top? Hulkenberg. Okay. Uh, I Cedro? think. Uh, oh. <laughs> or do you want to? Do you want to go on? on well. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. The drivers. I like the drivers. Oh. Okay. 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 All right. Um. But I. Th- I think. Uh, I. I. Th- there's no love lost between those two. No. And I think more so. Uh. I think Hulkenberg maybe just wants to. Would like to stick it to. Magnuson a little bit more. So uh, I just think maybe uh, Hulkenberg might just be a bit more uh, ruthless on track. And Magnuson, he goes through moments where he does some brilliant driving where you're like, wow, this is this is a driver that's you know has something. And then the next day he's he's just he, he's, it's just not there for him. So mm. um Hulkenberg just when he's when he jumps into the sea kind of uh you know as a reserve driver and stuff like that. He just seems to be consistent. You know, he's able to, he, he just, it's, you You know what you're going to get. Um, so, yeah, I think uh, I'm going to go with Hulkenberg over Magnussen. Yeah, well, we'll see if he's just a, a super sub or if he's here to stay uh, yeah. this season. Uh, Cedro, Hulkenberg or Magnussen, I have I've a feeling you're going to go the other way. Uh, I was at the beginning, but uh, I think I agree. Hulkenberg oh! will be... <laughs> will be the one, especially the experience and the amount of. Um, I mean, Kevin Magnussen, he's been with his team and he knows the car. Hulkenberg is just uh, it's the first time, but still, he has the experience, much much more experience than Kevin Magnussen. So mm-hmm. I think uh, I could see in the first five or six races, um, K Mag doing much better. But overall, by the end of the season, I think uh, Wilkenberg will will be on top. Mm. 
Okay. I'm going to say Hulkenberg as well because I don't want to talk about Haas anymore. I want to move on. So uh, we're going to go <laughs> Nobody to... Nobody wants to talk about Haas. <laughs> we're going what to go are we to... doing here? <laughs> Let's go to McLaren. Oh, a lot more interesting. Uh, delivery, the exact same, um, but an interesting lineup. Uh, who did I go to first last time? Uh, you? Okay, let's go. Let's go with Cedro first. Yeah, is that right? No, you went to Cedro last time. Oh, it oh okay. Matter. I don't mind. No, don't Dave, matter. take us away. Give us your McLaren thoughts this year. Uh, these guys are in trouble. Oh, interesting. Like, yeah, that this car is not working for them at all. Like, <laughs> they've they've done a complete shake up to sort of they basically copied. Well, I won't say they've copied a hundred percent, but they they've they've taken a huge portion of the RB eighteen Red Bull car from last year. Uh, for their concept for this year mm -hmm. um they're just it's just not working for them they have issues it's um yeah i think they're in trouble and you saw now i know it got blown out of proportion with uh, something your man will buxton said about lando norris you know oh lando norris punched the wall i don't think he did that i think he just he, he smacked the wall or something in frustration but that mm -hmm. was at the end of the third day of testing and i have a feeling just I saw the interview as well with uh, Lando did with Ted Kravitz on one of the notebooks or something like that. Now, look, Ted Kravitz would irritate a saint sometimes at the best of times. Yeah. But and but usually Lando Norris is very cheery and and is happy to roll with the punches with with Ted Kravitz and the jokes and stuff like that. But this time he cut him short. He just wasn't feeling it. Like cut him short was a bit ratty with him and just kind of, you know, cut him short and stormed off. Um, which I think came after the slap in the wall or whatever he did. So I just have a feeling he's not happy with that car at all, at all. Um, and I have seen a few reports um, saying that they, they, they are having trouble getting to grips with the car. There's a few reliability issues as well. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I think, yeah, I think they're in trouble. Uh, and it'd be interesting to see then, what happened, not just from Lando's side of things, because obviously this is going to be a completely different car for him to drive, even though um, he, he was kind of saying that it's as skittish as last year's car. It's still, it's a different approach. Mm -hmm. um, so it'll be interesting to see how he handles it. But of course, this will be geared towards him. It'll be designed towards Lando. Um, with So it'll be interesting to see whether piastri then can sort of come to grips with that or will he have a daniel ricardo moment where daniel was kind of complaining that the the car didn't favor him in terms of its driving style and stuff similar to what perez had at red bull yeah um it, it didn't necessarily suit his style so i think possibly though after say, in saying that i do think maybe piastri probably has a better chance of coming to grips with it than uh, Daniel Ricardo did because I mean he's a rookie driver. It's it's not like he's um, you know this it's you know he, he's not like he's sort of got um, old habits and stuff like that that are bred into him from years of uh, you know F1 driving. So he may be able to overcome that and just sort of adapt to whatever way the car is set up in sort of sort of uh, or design should I say for Lando's driving style. But yeah, they're in trouble this year. It just doesn't look like it's going well for them. I don't think they're going to necessarily be at the back of the grid, but certainly for the first uh, good kind of, I'd say the first quarter of the season, I think they're going to struggle to get on top of that car. Mm. Similar to what they had last season as well, if I remember. Yeah, I know they do. They have a major upgrade planned, I think, for Baku. I think it's about the fourth race in, I think, is Baku. Right. Um, so, and I believe it's like a, like it is a huge update, like a complete, uh, package like so we'll see what happens after Baku but that's you know I think up until then that they could have four painful races or three painful races yeah that's pretty comprehensive okay Cedro where you go I think the Papaya team uh, made some improvements but I don't think they are there yet and with the new not new new team one rookie driver and one experienced driver both young drivers so I'm not sure if they will be able to to have the car ready just right now. And would you favor uh, Norris over Piastri or Piastri over Norris? What do you think? I would go with Norris. Mm. Yeah, the experience is there. Dave? Yeah, I'm saying gone with Norris over Piastri. I mean, I don't think there's any... 
Yeah. And, but I don't think that's going to be anything against Piastri. I think he's going to, he will probably, I, I'm expecting him to have a good rookie season. I think he's just a phenomenal driver, well deserves his place on the grid. Um, but look, Lando's experience now in that car or that team and uh, in Formula One in general. So, a lot of teams coming out and saying that they would have loved to have had Piastri on their books. I, I saw it in Drive to Survive there that, that uh, Christian Horner was saying that they had a chance to sign Piastri and they're kicking themselves that they didn't at the time. So Was Alpine uh, one of them? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm going to go Norris as well there. Yeah, no, no, uh, no hiding that. I'm, an, I'm yeah. a Norris fanboy. Um, let's move on to the sexiest livery that uh, is on the grid this year. It is Mercedes. Isidro, we'll kick it off with you. Mercedes this year. What do you got? I, I, I like the new livery. Oh, they are cool. no longer the silver arrows. They'll be the black arrows, but they look very, very good. Mm. And I think the changes they made are still not there yet. I think there was a few issues after after the after the first day or just after the presentation but they definitely they they definitely improve from the last time we could see that uh hamilton is doing much better on this new car so i'm i have doubts that russell will be able to to do as he did to do what he did on the previous season i think hamilton is doing much better and he'll definitely be a a much more uh, will be a much more in lead than he was last year. I have, I think. Mm. Dave. Yeah, I sort of agree with uh, Zidro as well. Um, it's fantastic looking uh car. I'm kind of glad they went back to the black um car. I, I just think it looks much better. Yeah, everyone is. The I mean they've seem to have resolved the porpoising issues. I don't know whether that's just down to work that they've done or whether it's due to the 15 mil ride height increase in the regulations um, or a combination of both. Um, I'm sure that though, I'm sure there's going to still be tracks where that, you know, a bit of porpoising might sort of crop up. Uh, but Hamilton did then come out after the kind of the testing was finished on the final day of testing and said that there is issues that were there in last year's car that are still present in this year's car. So, and I'm not sure where I saw the interview, whether it was, and, and who it was, but I think there's kind of, they're not expecting to be challenging for the title. I don't think this season, um, which that Ferrari or not Ferrari, Mercedes are awful good at, playing that game yeah now we thought they were playing that game last year as well yes. it turns out no they weren't they were just in a really bad spot <laughs> they're being honest they were being honest yeah but i mean there's i remember there was years and they were do you remember they, they were just saying oh we're struggling we don't think we're gonna make it you know blah 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 blah. and then they come out like absolute swinging and everyone's just oh my god where did this pace come from <laughs> so I don't know. There might be a bit of that. There might be a bit of that kind of sandbagging and just there kind of is. not kind of showing their hand, which I, I really hope that's the case. Um, they said there's major upgrades upgrades coming for Imola. Uh, so that's uh, going to be in six races time. So and they said it's going to be because there was rumors as well that they were going to change the, the sort of like this was going to be a plan B that we were going to see similar to what we heard last year. Do you remember there was supposedly a plan B that we're going to go back to the conventional sort of side pods over the zero pods or no pods or whatever. Um, and that's sort of the rumor that went around this time. Um, and then they were talking to your man, um, Mike Elliott, the, uh, from uh, Mercedes. And he was saying that um, basically there will be major upgrade coming, but it's going to be an evolution of their current concept. Um, and it's not going to be, you know, a complete radical change away to a completely different, you know, st- your aero package and stuff like that. So, um, uh, yeah, th- th- these are another one. I mean, there's actually, there's a lot of teams. I'm interested to see how they pan out. Aston Martin, um, Alpine, I suppose. Mercedes as well, I think is in there. Are, like, are they just kind of laying low, just kind of, oh yeah, you know, playing the, Playing, playing possum or whatever you call it, like you know, and then uh, they'll come out swinging next week. I hope so. Hope yeah, 
Yeah, me too. That seemed to be the phrase of, of last season. There was porpoising, there was sandbagging, um, and Mercedes were the, were the center of, of two of those things. Mm. I would I would love, to, and I said it, I said it last season as well. I would love if uh, Mercedes were to be in the mix there because that's what we need is is three teams up there. And near the end of last season, they were in there. Yeah. So if they can continue work from where they were finishing off last season, I think they'll be in a good place. Um, Hamilton over Russell, Dave. Where do you stand? Oh, I mean, it's clear it's going to be Hamilton and then Russell. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't need. I do. I need to justify it or no? I don't <laughs> is think it, so. It's as clear as it. I think we're all on the same page there, Cedro. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. Hamilton over Russell. Yeah, yeah. We're yeah. all on the same page there. Okay, moving on to uh, the um, the champions, the reigning champions, Red Bull mm. and Verstappen, Perez. Dave, take it away, buddy. There's not much to really say about Red Bull. I mean, they sort of got the car perfect last year or as close as they could. And this year, it's sort of, it's like the RB18 plus, you know, <laughs> as, yeah, as opposed yeah, yeah. to the RB19. They just sort of made uh, improvements to what they had last year. And like, if you look at them side by side, the improvements are very marginal from um, sort of the... The, the the covers and stuff that, that that are there so the engine covers the side pods and stuff like that mm-hmm. uh, with a lot of these cars like a lot of the work is probably being done on the floor of the car the underneath because that's a, obviously a, where a lot of the downforce is coming from and i would imagine we're not going to see that until we see the first car getting craned off and we get some photographs of the underside of the cars mm-hmm. but each one of these each one of these teams would have probably spent a lot of time uh, working on the floor of their car, especially the fact that there was the regulation change to the 15 mil. So I wouldn't be surprised if Red Bull have put a bit of effort into their, uh, or, you know, I'm sure they've put a lot of effort into their, their, their minor adjustments to the last car, but I'd say there's a lot of work has probably gone in on the floor as well. Mm-hmm. And like they had, look, they had comfortable testing. They know the car, there was no re- real reliability issues. Even when you saw the that high vis, the airflow paint that they put on, uh, I mean, it, it was perfectly smooth. You could see that the, the paint was going exactly where it needed to go. There was no splashes, you know, yeah. flicking up anywhere. It was just perfect. I mean, that is the sign of a well designed aero package. So, yeah, look, there was no difference uh, really to last year. Some some tweaks. Um, I think they've reduced the weight. Um, and I kind of can't remember now. Let me see. Oh, I did read what, what what they one of the key areas they they did to reduce that weight, but I just can't think of it off the top of my head. But they've reduced the weight, so they are underweight, so they'll be using ballast this year. I think most teams are going to be using ballast this year, which gives them the opportunity to move that around on the car and stuff like that, to, probably for different tracks and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, I, I look. What's what? What more is there to say? Like that's uh, they'll be fairly solid straight out the gate that they've got a leg up on everybody pretty much yeah and it was interesting to see that verstappen when asked at the launch you know what do you think of the car he's like well you know why why would we change a winning car yeah What's, why would we do that <laughs> especially <laughs> when same. yeah there's no major regulation changes to sort of require you to completely overhaul your car like the only people that have overhauled their cars are the people that didn't have the or the teams that didn't have them working last year yeah so if you've got a working car last year you're hardly gonna you know a dominant car last year you're hardly gonna scrap it and start a whole new concept yeah so makes sense yeah all right isidro what do you think about red bull anything to add there well it's clearly the the same car as last year i mean they even changed the livery it's still the same they mm-hmm. probably fired the design team to save cost for this year, <laughs> and they just used the same, uh, the same JPEG, and that was it. Uh, it. I'd be interested to see if the reduced wind tunnel time and the and the cost cap in place, if that will affect them all. Do, do you think that will have an effect on Red Bull this year? It seems they are the only ones who didn't went with a carbon approach, so they definitely have something. Uh, not hiding, but they know something because every other team went with carbon. They just keep everything the same. Mm-hmm. So they have very confident on what they have. Okay, Dave? Yeah, just when you were saying there about the uh, the, the wind tunnel time and stuff like that having an impact, just what we were saying earlier, like about the the, the, the very minimal changes to 
from last year's car. Like they effectively have all their uh, like a lot of their wind tunnel work done on the car from you know last year. so now they're just sort of any wind tunnel time that was used was sort of for any sort of you know minor adjustments to that car so i really don't th- and maybe that i don't know whether that was intentional or whatever but um it may that 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 penalty may not impact them hard no. at all yeah so the lesson is uh spend as much money as you want break the cost cap and just you know it, there's no effect on you whatsoever get as many sandwiches in as you want <laughs> um <laughs> is there any question here of verstappen perez uh who's going to come out on top no we're not really. one no it's max and perez yeah yeah we're all in yeah. agreement there um all right let's take it to our last team of the day williams looking a bit more interesting uh than last year cedro kick us off with uh, your thoughts on williams this year well, the first thing I have to say is I like the Duracell sponsorship. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone the, does. The <laughs> I think that was genius. Whoever yeah. thought about that. So clever. Uh, the car itself, I think they definitely improved since last year. With the the testing has been proving that that both Albon and Sargent are doing good in the new car. Mm-hmm. So I'm looking forward to see. Uh, Williams doing much better than they did last year. I mean, they only got eight points. I'm sure this year they they'll be doing much better than that. Even though they have a rookie on the on the seat, I think between both uh, and the new Williams, we can expect a few good things. Yeah, the TV gone has been a, a massive bonus for them. Dave, what do you think? Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing how Williams fare this season. They've l- the, yeah, they've they've got taken a new approach. The, their car is sort of like a Frankenstein's monster of a car. It's just sort of pieced together from, you know, what they can find off other cars. Um, mm-hmm. Certainly, if you see a side by side or side on view, side by side with say Red Bull, for example, there's definitely more uh, notable kind of um, or noticeable similarities with Red Bull. But definitely, there's other cars in there as well that's um, that they've sort of uh, leaned towards. And and maybe it's not a bad idea. I mean, they've they've gone with stuff that's already proven to work. Sort of, I think what McLaren have tried to do. Um, clearly their car didn't work last year. Same with uh, Williams. Clearly their car didn't work last year. So let's sort of just harvest from someone else's sort of work what did work. Um, and sort of, you know, sort of put it into our own car. And it seems to be. Um, it's not a. It does. I, I'm not going to say it's going to be a particularly fast car, or I said. I should I say I don't think it's going to be a particularly fast car, at the, from the get go anyway. But I think what they have maybe demonstrated a bit from testing is that it's definitely more stable, um, and not as skittish as say the McLaren, who have a similar approach in terms of just you know, completely scrapping and and, and going again. So I think they've got a good platform to start from. And I think maybe they can build on that throughout the year. Uh, I'm not sure what sort of funds are available and what sort of packages they're going to be able to do in terms of upgrades and stuff like that. But I want to say, I think that, that I, I think I I don't think they're going to be the back markers consistently this season like they were last season. I think. They will see a, they'll still be down the back. I, I mean, I don't think this is going to be a this isn't a silver bullet they've just got here. So yeah. I I think they will will be down the back, but I think maybe you know they, they they'll certainly be maybe in the sixteen seventeen position um, and you know not having that uh, that ugly scar of being the nineteen and twentieth car on the grid every week. Yeah, and do you think there'll be any influence from that the James Vowell's going across from Mercedes? Will that make yeah. a difference? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think that's going to be... Um, now, they've lost guys in there as well, so that they're trying to replace. So there's definitely a team in transition. Um, whether that's something they're going to address as the season goes on, I don't know. But yeah, definitely with Vowell's going over there, that's a huge, that's a huge gain for for um Williams especially as their uh, as far as I know yeah they're Mercedes motors so um so yeah that's uh, that's a huge that's a huge a huge gain for them yeah and Albon over Sargent or Sargent over Albon what do you think 
oh, it's going to be Albon over Sargent. Yeah, yeah. Sargent's good, but uh, I, I, Albon has that experience, like uh, in in F one, unless Sargent just turns up and does something, imp- you know, a, a rookie, you know, an impressive rookie season. But yeah, I'll go with Albon over Sargent. What about you, Cedro? Uh, same. Alex Albon will be will be the main driver. We're too in sync. This isn't interesting if we're not <laughs> fighting with <Yeah>. each other. <laughs> um, I would agree as well. Yeah, it's going to be Albon. I think There's the experience is there now. Um, and hopefully he's a good car under him as well because he deserves that after all he's been through in, in Formula 1. Um, Dave, it's time. We're going to do some predictions. That, that kind of wraps up um, all of the teams for the 2023 season. Do you want to take us into predictions? Yeah, no worries at all. Right. Okay, so we're going to do... The predictions for the season. So we're all going to give a series of predictions that we'll look back on at the end of the season and see what absolute disasters we decided to to put forward. And um, this was supposed to have been done before the preseason testing. So this was supposed to be a little bit more um, loose and fancy, but it's uh, we we've uh, we have the luxury now of a bit of preseason testing to to hone our our, our choices. Um, some of us may not have taken nope. that luxury, Isidro, but uh... <laughs> did you not? How could you not? No, I'm keeping the the same. He's, as... he's locked in, so oh, yeah. I've I've changed so much stuff. <laughs> it's yeah, same, same here. <laughs> so we're gonna do that. We're gonna do the season prediction. So we'll do that now, and then at the end of that, so not to confuse everybody, we're gonna have our normal race predictions that we'll be doing on a race by race. Um, a race by race uh, case and then at the end of each um, race and predictions we will obviously award points and then at the end of the points or end of the season whoever has the highest points like I had last year this guy um, we will announce a winner (laughs) so with that all mess out of the way let's start with the season predictions so um, we'll start with oh the order that I have it here in the document so it's going to be Scotty first and we'll go with your top three drivers to fi- finish in the championship. Okay, here we go. I'm going to say Alex Albon number one. No, I'm not. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was starting to write that. I was like, what the- <laughs> uh, Max Verstappen number one. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to say Carlos Sainz to follow up from what I said about Ferrari earlier on, uh, number two. Yeah. And I'm going to say Lewis Hamilton number three. Okay. Yeah, I'm That's- taking a swing. All right. Well, uh, yeah, I've kind of done the same. Well, not, but I've taken a swing. So I've gone uh, Max number one. Um, I'm going Lewis number two. Oh, I, I'm just I'm gonna, I'm going to assume that that's uh, there's there's we haven't seen what that Mercedes can do yet. Mm. Now is we could see the first race, and I'll be like, what have I done? But yeah, until then, <laughs> uh, and then third, I'm going to go Leclerc. Oversight. Which goes against what I said earlier about yeah. science, but I'm going with Leclerc. <laughs> this does not make sense. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Please, sir, make sense. <laughs> oh, God. All right, Isidro, what so, have we got going on? Uh, Max Verstappen first, yeah. George Russell second, Ooh. and Charles Leclerc third. Now, in fairness, he's stuck with Leclerc and his yeah. his decision. We he's overrode consistent. him. And... <laughs> he's All right. consistent. Okay, so, uh, Scotty, now we need your top three in the Constructors' Championship at the end of the season, please. All right, here we go. Red Bull, number one. Easy peasy. Yeah, of course. Um, number two is going to be Mercedes, Benz, Patronus. Okay. Um, and number three is Ferrari. All righty. I think Russell is going to be is going to out to Leclerc this season, which will push Merck up into two. So I've gone a bit of a weird one. This so I've gone with Red Bull, number one, number two. I've gone with Ferrari, even Ooh. though I've got Leclerc finishing third. I think Signs will outdo Russell, and that will offset the uh, the points to give Ferrari second in the championship, mm-hmm. um, and then Mercedes third. Right. Zero. Your oh, unchanged well, predictions. I'm please. the same with the Scotty. Red Bull first, Mercedes second, Ferrari third. My man, All right. Copy my so homework. <laughs> Ferrari. Okay, so driver with the most DN. <clears throat> Excuse me. Got too excited. Driver with the most DNFs. This was so easy for me. So easy. Yuki Sonoda. Big year. 
he's going to fluff it so many times this year. We're going to see him. And, yeah, he's gone. Um, do you know who I've uh, I've gone a little outside on this one? I've gone Piastri. Ooh. I think that McLaren is going to be a pig. Right. Just based on that, yeah. Yeah. Is he draw? I'm going against what I said earlier. Uh, most DNFs will be Joe. Ooh. <laughs> Joe. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, as Z or Scotty, driver with the, that will finish with the least points at the end of the season. Well, this ties in with my most DNFs. So, Yuki Sonoda again. I am down on Yuki. I'm done with him. I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> I've had too many seasons of, of lis- listen to him give out over team radio and cursing the people. I'm just done with them. <laughs> yeah, 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 I hear it you. needs to I go away. You. All right, well, I'm going to go for a driver with the least points at the end of the season will be Logan Sargent. Mm, yeah, it makes sense, unfortunately. And Zidro, who have you got? Yuki Tsunoda. Oh, my wow. man. <laughs> we are absolutely pounding on the Sonoda. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, the best thing about Yuki's season last season was something that I hated, but it was that thing on Netflix where he was talking about going for a poo. That was yeah. the best thing he did, and it was <laughs> shite, <laughs> literally. Um, so, yeah. All right, Scotty. Team with the least points. Team? Oh, no. Team That's with the least easy. points. Yep. Oh, uh yeah, I was going for uh Williams. Okay. Um I am going to go with Haas. <laughs> of course you are. <laughs> <laughs> That's they hurt your Mick hope. Schumacher. <laughs> yeah, you hurt my friend. <laughs> um <laughs> All right, Zita, who you got? Haas. Oh. Oh yeah, look at this. Hassholes. Pair of tag team on fucking Hass. Is it Gunther that you're down on? You don't like Gunther? I just don't like them as a team, mm. as a group of people, Scott. <laughs> a collective. <laughs> They've got a weird. There's a weird relationship between Gene Hass and uh, and Gunther Steiner, isn't there? Gunther Steiner's funny. I'll I'll give him that. But I just think how they manage and how they work within that team. I just I don't I don't like it. Yeah. I, I don't I don't like with I don't like how they sort of uh just sort of bought the car that they have effectively they just threw it in there they yeah and yeah no i i good riddance mm. last mm. no points <laughs> <Nil pois. laughs> um <laughs> so next one is the team with the fastest pit stop of the season uh this one was an easy enough one for me i think mercedes okay these guys are super quick in the pits i've gone red bull Ooh. Same. And a zero. Red Bull. They've been the fastest team for the best five years, I think. The pit stop. Don't tell Scotty. God damn it. <laughs> Stupid research. Why can they now, just here we're getting Google to some them? interesting ones now. I like these ones. So so the team that will overachieve at the end of the season we'll debate whether it was an overachievement or an underachievement, but for now we'll just make the, the, the calls and we'll debate it at the end of the season. This Keep is down, this is where my opinion changed from where I originally originally did my Oh uh, good. Um I'm gonna go for Austin Martin. I'm gonna say your they're going team to, over- to overachieve. Yeah, yeah. So I've gone with the same. I've gone Aston Martin <laughs> as well. <laughs> ah, testing. Now I'll be honest, I I had to go back and forth between Aston Martin and I Williams as well. I just there was yeah. something there and then I assessed the 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 testing again, and I was like, oh, I don't think I'm happy to make bold calls, but that's one I just can't make. <laughs> yeah, it's a step too far, isn't it? Yeah, it was. So, uh, Azidro, who's your team to overachieve? Williams. Wow. Okay. So, what is overachieving after for Williams? We, after we is that after is we that ninth said. place? <laughs> um. I know, like that's what I said. I think at the end of the season, we'll sort of Decide look them. at where they finished, and then we'll have a debate about whether that was an overachievement. So, for example, if Williams were to finish, say, fifth in the constructors' championship or sixth, yeah. even, we'd be like, do you know what? That was a good overachievement. But if they finished eighth, we'll be like, yeah. no, nah, you're not getting no. that zero. Mm. Um, so <laughs> he's worried now. Look at his face. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I was hoping they'd get ninth, <laughs> the top and that was an overachievement. Top seven. <laughs> first, they have to come first. All right, next one. Team to underachieve this season. 
Again, testing swayed this for me. I'm going to say McLaren. Jesus, we're fair, we're, we're 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 there, Z or uh, Scotty. Yeah, yeah, I've gone McLaren as well. Yeah. What's underachieve in the in this scenario? Well, that's the same as the overachieve. We'll debate it at the end of the season. But I mean, if McLaren just finished last in the constructors, we're pretty sure that's a bad season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm thinking McLaren might even finish down underneath the the Alfa Romeos. So if we set look, if we set a, a, a target then of McLaren underachieving, we would say they finish sixth or lower in the drivers' con- yeah, championship. Yeah, I think that's fair. So sixth they, or lower, they've been pretty then, consistent. Um, and then for overachieving, say the Aston Martin, if we said fifth or higher, is that an overachieving? Oh yeah, definitely. Ooh. Yeah, I think so. Williams to f- finish fifth. No, no, no. I Williams, no. I, I would, t- I would accept maybe <laughs> seven. <laughs> He's feeling hard done by here. Cedro's <laughs> fighting his corner. No, no. What do you think, Scotty? It's seventh or higher. Williams, or Williams finished last last year. Yeah, they're, I, they're dead last. Yeah, a a jump of two places would be an overachievement, I think, for Williams. So seventh or higher, I would imagine. Yeah, seventh is, or higher. Yeah. I go with that. Uh, all right, Anna, do you know what? I better make a note of this, otherwise we're going to complain about this when it gets to the end of the season. <laughs> all right, so seventh. Oh, tits on a bike. Uh, seventh or higher. It helps if I can spell higher. There we go. Okay, <laughs> Aston Martin, we were saying, what, fifth or higher? Yeah. Fifth or higher. And then... Uh, so to underachieve then McLaren, we were going with what? Well, Lord wait, 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 wait. So Sixth Aston Martin is, sorry. Aston Martin finished seven last year. And you say they only need to finish fifth. That's only two positions. But Williams Mercedes finished 10 and you want them to jump three positions yeah, to seven. But you have to understand the difficulty of the <laughs> jump. That, that That's like kind of saying I'm taking two steps at a time, but then we have to take three steps at a time. Like, like, Aston Martin, once you go above fifth, you're now into Red Bull, Ferrari, Mercedes. Um, who else Al- are you going to have in Alpine. there? Alpine, you're going to have in there. Like McLaren. If you're going to say that they have to finish fourth, I mean, that is. The, that's big. It's that's big. a miracle. Like, that's, that's, yeah, well, like, that's I not mean, happening, let's be honest. Well, it could. It could. Mm. I don't know whether I'm going to state my bet on it, but uh, <laughs> yeah. maybe it could. <laughs> Like I'm happy to go with fifth or higher. I do think Williams, it's more achievable at the bottom of the grid to go up to seventh and make a bigger jump than it will be for Aston Martin to get in the mixer of those bigger teams. Well, I'm just looking at the points. Yeah. Alpha Tauri finished with 35, Haas finished with 37. Then on seven, it was Aston Martin with 55 points. Hmm. Can Williams do 55 points in a season? Yeah. Oh, look at you. And I'm the <laughs> one saying they overachieve. Okay. <laughs> Seven or higher, I think, is absolutely perfect. I, I, I think we've locked it in. I think that's... I, I, <laughs> let's, let's revisit uh, at the end of the season and, and, and we can have a debate about that again. All uh, right. But I've, I, I've written it yeah. down anyway, just as our starting point of debate. Yeah, yeah. Makes okay, sense. Let's, let's come All right. So it. the team to underachieve, McLaren, what are we saying? They have to finish, what, sixth or lower? Is sure. That, like, where did they finish last season? Huh? Fifth. 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 Maybe Probably you might have to play. say seventh or lower. Yes, yeah, that's, that's 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 hard. I mean, will they finish seventh? I I know I put them down as. Well, uh, as, they finished fifth with one hundred and fifty nine points. In six was Alfa Romeo with fifty five, so they finished with over a hundred points. Yeah. Okay. So sixth or lower then? Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. that. That would be bad. Sixth or or lower. Okay. All right, so now is Zero. Finally, we're getting to the who's your team to underachieve? Aston Martin. Well, that was clearly that's your decision before you <laughs> saw all that. Okay, um, so what's so underachieving for Aston Martin? For Aston Martin? To underachieve, where did Aston Martin finish last season? Seven. And so, if they're going to underachieve this year, where are you putting them? Uh, maybe. And don't forget, they can still finish. You can still say seventh because I mean, based off the package that they have, like that would, it would be, be the underachievement. Of, yeah. It's not based off last year, but just want they to make you feel bad about they, the choice. They should keep the seventh place at least. 
Okay, so seven or lower with the same is number of points as Alfa Romeo in six. So yeah, you would imagine seventh or be, lower. That would be a bad. Yeah. yeah. All right, Scotty. The last one uh, before we move on. Name one strange thing. Or a little bit. Start that again. Name one strange thing to happen this season. I love this pick, and I I know someone else is going to love this pick as well. My strange thing that's going to happen this year is. Danny Ricardo on a podium. On a podium. That's a level up on the Stranger Things. <laughs> <laughs> no. Obviously with Red Bull. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair Not just enough. standing on a podium. I, I believe that he's going to be there. <laughs> yeah, he's just <laughs> handing the trophy to Perez. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. All right. Well, the the strange thing I had to happen was Mick Schumacher oh. to finish on a podium. Oh wow! <laughs> obviously with with Williams, I was about to say. Obviously with Mercedes. Wow! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Both, I both are quite possible. In fairness. Yeah, like it only takes uh, you know one of them to ride their bike to work and <laughs> join Lance Stroll on yeah. the on the sofa. And then you're given Danny Ricardo or Mick Schumacher one shot to perform in one of those high oh, performance yeah. cars. Oh yeah, it's a one time deal. Like you get one you're race, nailing you, have that to, thing. you have to finish third. Yeah, but like I think both of them look. It's it's pl- plausible. It's plausible. You just love Mick Schumacher. You wanted a chance to <laughs> even to say him. his name. <laughs> love him, love him. I'm going to be saying his name all season. He's the he's the only reserve driver that's going to get so much hype on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Zidro, what do you have? Mine is similar to Dave, but not as not as uh, high hopes. Mine will be just Mick Schumacher to race in See, 2023. I love Mick Schumacher more than you do. Mm, it is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm willing to put him on a podium. Mm. All right, I mean, so you're going with Mick yeah. Schumacher to, to basically race. to get a drive. Yeah, at Mercedes. In, in Mercedes, or can he get? Bumped off to maybe McLaren? Williams. Can you you can drive for Williams and uh, and McLaren as well. He, yes, and McLaren. Sorry. He was made available to McLaren, I believe. Mick Schumacher to get a to get a drive. So are you are you locking in Mercedes mm, or are you going? No, just saying he will race. Oh, open ended. Okay, fair enough. All right. Well, that t- that's that. Uh, concludes our picks for the season and uh, let me just double check that I have them locked in because I have a feeling I might have accidentally just deleted them. Nope, they're there. Grand. Okay. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> I just accidentally closed the, the document without saving it but it's uh, thank God for autosave. <laughs> um, okay, right. Everybody, rather than confusing everything, <laughs> that was our predictions for the end of the season and we will revisit those predictions uh after the last race of the season we'll do uh probably won't do it for the last podcast of the season we'll probably do another one afterwards uh mm. dedicated to that so for now though we're getting excited about the first race of the season in bahrain and now's the time to put your money where your mouth is or your mouth where your money is whatever way you want to put it and give us some predictions for the first race of the season, which is going to be difficult. Mm. So I have gone absolutely bonkers on this one. Oh, class. I can't so wait to hear. My first two are fairly plain Jane. So I've gone Max Verstappen to take the win. Yeah. I've got Leclerc. Oops. I've got Leclerc to take second. Um, this is where it goes a little off the rails for me. <laughs> I've gone to get that third place. I'll give everyone a, a guess. Mick Schumacher. One guess, Scotty. Who did I go with? <laughs> Mick Schumacher. Mick Schumacher. <laughs> <laughs> no. um, if you're gone bonkers, I'm going to say Fernando Alonso. Um, who do you have as Zero? Who would you guess? Uh, your pick or? Yeah, just yeah, mine. Who would you guess? I would probably bought us. Oh. Scotty had Alonso. Yes. I'm going with Alonso P3. Ooh. I just, I, I'm just, it's a complete shot in the dark. It's like a Paddy Power bet. <laughs> um, uh, all right, Scotty, who do you have? Top three. Stop making time. I like it. Fairly, yeah, I was just making a little change there. My um, my predictions for top three are pretty plain. I'm going to say Verstappen one, obviously. Yeah. I'm going to say Sainz two. 
And I'm going to say Perez three. Okay. Okay. Like Sainz sort of, is going to uh, split them. Continuing the pattern from last season. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Azidro. Max first. Leclerc yeah. second. Who? Sorry. Perez. Uh, Perez Charles second. Leclerc. And then Leclerc. And third is Perez. Oh, sorry. Hang on. Sorry. You've gone Max first. Le- Max Leclerc first, second. Leclerc second. Perez. And Perez third. third. Okay. It's a peasy. Okay, so uh, flop for next week. Um, I've gone with Lando Norris. Oh, for God. Uh, and I know I was going to have Piastri because I know I've put Piastri down with the most DNFs, but I just have a feeling Lando might, you know, he might, uh, that car is in his head a little bit maybe after that kind of bit of a ten- te- temper tantrum and stuff like that after testing. So if that's in his mind, he might, uh, he might something might happen bad vibes or something who do you go buddy <laughs> lando norris <laughs> bottom lando. 10 uh. oh are we calling hang on a second i just call a flop hang on. i'm gonna sorry i'm calling a dnf on that oh right. i'm saying bottom 10 is that a flop for lando a bottom 10 yeah i think it is isn't it well well, he was I guess because we driver. don't know we don't have any benchmark cuz obviously yeah. if he finished if he finished 15th in Bahrain at the next race, if you said bottom 10, we'll be like, well, no, we finished 15th in the last yeah, race. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. so now you can say, yeah, so so outside top Excellent. 10. Yeah, yeah. So outside T10. Um, okay, Azidro, who have you got? There's a flop. Yeah. Alonso, DNF. Alonso. Oh, oh. you break <laughs> my heart. <laughs> <laughs> you either win or I do. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, okay. Um, surprise. Uh, and I don't know whether you're going to give this to me or I'm going to have to, um, I'm going to have to, um, come up with another one, but technically this is correct. (laughs) Right. So my surprise is Alonso (laughs) (laughs) on the podium. (laughs) Uh, Well, I mean, it's the surprise, and I've and I've called him in my picks. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, if, you, I, if you could double or nothing, I suppose. Yeah. Um. Okay. Yeah, I'll give you that. Okay. Yeah, now, I agree. I I don't, I don't know if you're going to give me this because this was also my pick, and I was going to change it, but then I decided not to. But I'm saying <laughs> Alonso P5, which doesn't come anywhere near your prediction, but oh, mine's mental, yeah. I've nailed in P5 for Fernando Alonso. Well, you're going P5, you know, you're going to do like a P5 to P7. You're just going to go no. fucking all in P5. P5, yeah. No I thought I might need for... to nail it to, mm-hmm. to the an exact number. I'm going to Podcast do that. could always use a hero. Yeah. <laughs> P5 <laughs> yeah. it is. <laughs> Give it to me. All right, Isidro. My surprise will be Logan Sargent top 10. Mm, that would be a big. surprise. That is big. That's a that's huge. That that's up there with me saying Alonso top <laughs> P three. Like, <laughs> wouldn't Logan it be said, great to see Fernando Alonso on a podium? <laughs> Especially if it's the first race of the season, because it would get you pumped for the so rest beautiful. of the season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's class. Um, all right. Well, that's it. That's that's our uh, that's our picks locked in for next week. And I think as we have been on here for way over an hour, I think yeah. that's the end of our first podcast of the 2023 season. As uh, Scotty said at the very start, we were to be on video, but um, yeah, let's not revisit that <laughs> barrel of anxiety. Um, so we will at some point throughout the season uh, be moving to video. Um, we have all the gear, the equipment, everything ready to go. Um, just uh, having some software technical difficulties that we need to iron out. So look forward to that later on in the season. But mm-hmm. until then, we will see you for Bahrain next week. We will be recording on Sunday, releasing on Monday as always. So be prepared for that. And until next week. <laughs>